Today we're going to be testing out the new Crane M3 with the Sony ZV-1 to see how stable our footage is and if this gimbal is the perfect gimbal for the ZV-1. I wanted to start this video off using the ZV-1 as a vlog camera so you guys can see what it looks like right now. I have standard stabilization on, but we're actually going to try to shoot this train right here to see if we can make some cinematic footage as best as possible and see what we can do with the ZV-1 on the new Crane M3. Let's go get our first shot. So the first thing that I always do when I come on to set is I try to find really cool angles and shots. And in this case, I see this light right here that's hitting the grass. And I know if I just push my camera through there, it's gonna give me a nice lens flare while we're also looking at this, this train right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I just went ahead and set it to program auto for the exposure because we're in the golden hour, we don't have a lot of time. So as long as my train is exposed correctly, then I'm just gonna slowly move it across the bottom like this so we can get a nice, beautiful shot. Maybe I'll go back and forth a couple times. That'll be a really good way to introduce this train, kind of like with a cinematic video. Let's go get our next shot. So the first shot that we wanna get is our scene establishing shot. This is the most important shot in the whole cinematic sequence. I keep on telling you guys this, but you don't listen to me. So for this one, what we're gonna do is, I put the wide angle lens on the ZV-1. I stood back a little bit, and I'm gonna slowly punch in so that we can have an idea of what we're about to see in this cinematic sequence. And the way that I did this was, I went ahead and set my exposure to manual. I wanted to expose for the train, because otherwise, it'll expose for the sky, and then the train will be all black. So in this case, I don't really care that the sky is gonna be overblown, I just wanna be able to see the train, especially because it's backlit right now. And then once I have it exposed correctly, I'll just do a smooth punch in with this gimbal. I'm also holding the front trigger down so that I have control over my tilt axis. So now that we have our scene establishing shot out of the way, now we're gonna do a reveal shot. This is kind of just adding to the scene establishing shot so we are adding to our story. I'm gonna use this tree as the thing that blocks it. I have to expose for the train and manually focus on the train. And then once both of those things are set in place, I set the camera right in front of something just like this tree and I'll do a slow track to the left, which will also give us a reveal of the train. So this is how I'll do it. Right there, I'm perfectly exposed. The sky's a little bit overexposed, but that doesn't really bother me. We're losing light fast, so we're gonna go to the other side of the train where the sun is still shining on it to see if we can get some of these sun rays that are shining through some of this engine area right here. It's that nice golden light that we wanna really capture with the ZV-1. By the way, I have the wide angle lens, the cage, and the Arca Swiss mount plate on this gimbal, and it's totally handling it. It's no problem at all. In fact, I could probably put that entire ZV-1 rig on this gimbal because the motors are that strong. So with this shot right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for my golden flares that I want, which right here looks about good. And I'm gonna shoot it before it goes away. So I'm going to actually expose for all that light that you see in there. I'm not gonna expose for the black parts up here. And I'm gonna give myself some foreground. In this case, this little bar right here, it'll be a good horizontal bar that I can track along so that you can see something in the foreground as we look down into the back there. And now we can track. Now that we've got those three or four shots under our belt, we're just gonna do a walk along back here. I also wanna mention that the gimbal itself charges the ZV-1. So now you don't have to worry about the short battery life anymore on the ZV-1. I'm losing light really fast. The sun just went down below the buildings over there. So now I'm just gonna set it to bro program auto exposure and let the camera do the work and let's just hope for the best. I'm also gonna set my ISO to auto. That way we hope, uh, Nothing looks too bad and too grainy, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Do 
you want to get an idea of what the sights and smells are around here, it smells like somebody smoking marijuana. So you got the train, the train tracks, the golden hour, and the marijuana smoke. Let's go get the next shot. As I mentioned before, I use the Arca mount Swiss plates rather than just using the little base plate that comes with the gimbal because then I can interchange different cameras and I just have a very minimal amount of balancing to do. Whereas if I have the base plates attached to the bottom of my cameras, whether it's the A7S III, the ZV-E10, or the ZV-1, then I have to unscrew that and re-screw it in and try to figure out where exactly my spot is. So for this final shot, I'm gonna track along the tracks so I can track how good it tracks. And I'm gonna focus on the wheel that's in the back there so that the, these tracks are kind of like not in focus, but the wheels behind there are. Now maybe people will think the train is actually moving. Let's see if we can jump up on a building and try to get a bird's eye view of this train. Let's go. So we just came up to the highest building we could find to see if we get almost like a bird's eye view. While we're walking over there, I want to talk about the stabilization on this gimbal. So far this whole time, I've had it set to standard stabilization. I could put it to active, but that's going to make the ZV-1 punch in, and I want to try to get as wide of an angle shot as I possibly can, so I've left it at standard. The Crane M3 is definitely an upgrade from the Crane M2. I'm not even 100% sure amount of weight gimbal can hold, but it sure seems to be a lot because it's handling this ZV-1 with the wide angle lens way better than the M2 ever could have. Okay, so I don't think I'll be able to get a good shot of that train, but at least we can make it look like a drone flew up here. All right, so final shot of the day, gonna make it look like a drone outro shot. So I'm gonna expose for the sky, because if I expose for the ground, then the sky will be overblown and it's so beautiful right now. But we also wanna make it look like it's moving. All right. Now I'm thinking maybe I climb up here to see if I can really get a good shot. Just kidding. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoy the little cinematic sequence that I put together at the end of this so you guys can take a look at it. Until the next video, I'm Film with Joe Alliance. Peace. I came to the other side of this parking garage and I saw the cityscape, which is a beautiful shot. So I figured I would just throw this in at the end. There's a second encore to this video. I have been getting a comment from somebody named Shaw Magic for the past 12 months asking me what we're supposed to do in low light with the ZV-1 because he puts a shotgun mic on top of this camera and he doesn't have anywhere to put a light, especially at night. So he asked, what do we do in low light situations? Well, today, my friend, you are in luck because the Crane M3 comes with a light attached to the gimbal. And I think if you put it kind of at its lowest settings in your low light situation, it's perfect for street magic or vlogging or whatever it is you find yourself in and there's no more place to have to put the light. I think that this little gimbal is the perfect vlog setup for any ZV-1 user. So I'm sorry that this is the third encore, but I'm so excited that I could finally put the wide angle lens on the ZV-1 and put this camera on a gimbal. The M2 just was a little bit too weak to hold on to a camera like this, but now I feel like the sky's the limit. So I see a lot of these kind of these Christmas lights here and I feel like it's a perfect time to utilize this wide open aperture that we have and see how nice these lights come out with the ZV-1 on this gimbal. So let's get some low light shots. I don't even know what kind of gimbal move that was, but it was pretty cool. Let's see what else we can find. So now I'm gonna focus in on that building back there. I'm gonna manual focus and I'm gonna reveal shot. As if we're doing some type of real estate video for that building. Sometimes I like to put myself into scenario bases where I pretend like I'm shooting something for like a real estate shot or a product. And I think to myself, what exactly is the best framing that you could have for that shot? So that concludes this video this time for sure. Till the next video, I'm Joe with Home Alliance. Peace.